There is a misconception about Aaron Rodgers that is out there that in today's show, we are going to completely disprove. We're going to talk all things Jets with NFL film guru, NFL film analyst for FanDuel TV, Matt Hamilton, joins the show. So let's hit it and get it started. Damn, does it feel good to have a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Another freaking game. Oh, fuck your asses off. That was awesome. Hey, I'm as hungry as you guys are. I know it's been a long time since we've been in the playoffs, even longer time since we've been in the Super Bowl. But I promise you, I'm as hungry as you guys are, and I'm excited to meet you all and to be a part of something special this year. So come along for the ride. Hit it! We have Garrett Wilson. Let's freaking go. We have Breesaw. We are ready to win. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super chat, baby. Cut the line. We have an elite defense. You're welcome on the Jet bandwagon. Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. This is the Jay Gasman Show. Oh, baby, here we go. Welcome in, everyone. Thanks for spending part of your day with us right here on the channel. I am excited about our guest today. If you watch the show, Good Morning Football, you saw this guy on that show all the time with his weekly segments. If you have followed Kay Adams over to FanDuel TV, the show Up and Adams, then you know exactly who my guest is today. He's one of the best when it comes to breaking down all things film. Matt Hamilton joins the show. Matt, can't thank you enough for the time. Welcome in. Jake, thanks for having me on, and I'm I'm fired up for this season now after that intro after that intro video. That was incredible. <laughs> I appreciate that. I you know I can't take any credit though. We got a guy named Gator that made the whole thing happen. No, oh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be excited for Jet fans right now. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. And I think after they see some of the plays that we have for you to break down, they're going to be even more pumped up. Before we get into <laughs> kind of any of that, tell people who maybe aren't quite familiar with your career how you got to where you are with FanDuel TV. Before that, obviously, you're on the most popular, one of the most popular morning shows in general, but certainly the most popular sports morning show and good morning football. Tell us kind of your backstory, how you got to where you are. Yeah, so um, really, I started in the football world more so than the TV world. In, uh, in college, I was a student coach at Missouri uh, with the quarterbacks with Chase Daniel and then uh, the beginning of the Blaine Gabbard era there um coach high school football for a bit i worked in the lions scouting department for a little bit so um that was kind of my background initially um started at nfl films they had a show called playbook that was all uh film breakdowns x's and o's they brought me in there to work on that and then kind of worked my way from there in the production world so, uh, made my way over to good morning football and then uh when k made the switch to FanDuel tv and came calling she uh, i followed her over there and uh it was uh uh, one of the best decisions I could have made. There we go. There we are. <laughs> so what's it been like to kind of make that transition with Kay? She, of course, is the big star of Good Morning Football, the host of the show. She leaves. Now she's kind of doing her own thing with FanDuel TV, and she wants you to come join her and be part of this production. I mean, it was great. You know, we have, uh, you know, we worked together for six years on GMFB. We developed such a such a good working relationship throughout that time. And uh, it just made it so easy. It made it so seamless. And especially, you know, she told me she's like, I want you to be on air with me more. I want I want to be able to bring you in whenever I want to chat. And uh, it's just so it's fun because, you know, we're, we're friends and I feel like w we want that dynamic to show through. I think it does show through. We have a good time. We, uh, you know. I feel uh, I try to give her a hard time as much as I possibly can. Um, and uh, no, it's just been it's been so much fun working together. It really has been. You guys do a great job together. So I'm thrilled to have you on because we will get to some of these plays with Aaron Rodgers will break down. But just your thoughts overall on kind of where the Jets are right now. They make the big move to bring in Aaron Rodgers. When you look at the Jets and the expectations, how do you view what would be a fair expectation for a 2023 Jets team? Yeah, I mean, I think playoffs have to be the baseline, right? I think that's that's a fair and reasonable expectation. It's what it's what this team should accomplish. Um, a division title is not a crazy thing to think about. I think when you look at the talent this roster has and you look at the way they played the Bills last year, even with the quarterback situation, uh, I think the division is definitely uh, in within their reach. And I think, you know, obviously when you get to that point with the division as talented as the AFC East, if they can win that, uh, 
you know, this is a team that should reasonable should have reasonable Super Bowl expectations. I don't think that's a crazy thing to say when you add a quarterback of this caliber uh, with the defense that they have, with the talent like Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson that you showed in that hype up video. Um, there's really, you know, again, I'm not saying they're going to win a Super Bowl, but it is a reasonable thing to aspire to for this team and for this franchise right now. When you look at the rest of the roster around Rodgers, you brought up some of the young players, the the defense. I mean, I, I think nationally people look at, oh, well, the Jets added Aaron Rodgers. Like, cool, like they're still in the AFC. I think, and I know you're aware because you were doing a national show, but I don't think people realize just how good the rest of the team was yeah. besides the obvious issue at quarterback. Like, I still think even nationally people look at the Jets like, ah, you know, maybe they could be, you know, 10 and 7, 9 and 8. I look at it like if Aaron Rodgers is vintage Rodgers and, I certainly want to get into your thoughts on that. I, I think this team could absolutely contend in the AFC East, and then who knows what happens. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's it, it's going to – health is always going to be a big question there. It affects – you know, it always is for every team. You don't make it that far without staying healthy. And we saw the Jets deal with some major injuries last year, especially on that offensive line. If that offensive line is able to stay intact – I think there's a ton of talent there that doesn't really get talked about. Elijah Vera Tucker is incredible. Um, Brees Hall was going to run away with rookie of the year before he got hurt. And then, you know, to have another guy in the building that was able to take that torch and run with it and win rookie of the year in Garrett Wilson. There is so much talent on this team. And obviously we know what the defense has been able to do. Um, so there really is so much talent on this team. And, and you saw it last year. And that's what I think was so frustrating uh, for Jets fans this past year is they knew how much talent was there and it was just the quarterback situation getting in the way. And I was actually at, um, I think where it really just hit a it hit rock bottom, uh, the, the Jaguars game on Thursday night football, I was in the building for that and just, you know, the MVP chance for Streveler when he came in and completed a pass is just, that's how bleak that it got. Um, so to be at this point right now, um, you know, it's almost a, it has to feel I'm sure for Jets fans, it feels kind of like a dream to go from that moment just a few months ago to having Aaron Rodgers uh, leading your franchise. And just hearing him say like we and referring to the Jets or saying he only wanted to play for the Jets. It's just we're like, well, he's talking about us. What? This is real. <laughs> like it's still I know it's been about a month since the trade became official and he's at OTAs. But it really is surreal just because. I mean, I don't need to tell you, you know, football, but like the, the Jet fan is one of the most passionate, loyal fans in all of sports. And we have had nothing. Forget a Super Bowl in over 54 years now, 55 years. But this team's got the longest playoff drought in professional sports. It's them and the Buffalo Sabres and the NHL. So it just we are just starving for competency. And here comes Aaron Rodgers, who wants to be here like it really is a dream. Yeah. And, and I, and I grew up, you know, I grew up in the New York area. I, I did grow up a Giants fan, but um, I, you know, as you could tell, I, I kind of love football and watched everybody and always paid attention to everything. And I, you know, I grew up during that, that Neil O'Donnell era. I remember that well, I, I, Glenn Foley and, you know, Vinny to Chad Pennington. I, I, I've, I've been there, you know, again, while I was a Giants fan, I still, I was there. I have a lot of Jets fans. Friends. I was there along the ride. So you know, I, I do fully understand like how momentous this is. And I'm, and I'm happy for Jets fans to have this moment because they deserve it. They've been through so much. No question about it. So I want to warn you in advance, Matt, the computer mm. I'm on right now is not my normal computer. So when we booked this, I was like, Oh, I'll have my normal laptop. I'll be able to pull up the plays. It won't be laggy at all. So just bear with me for any lags here as okay. we go through some of the film, <laughs> because I, you know, I'm on hardline internet. I'm doing everything possible, but my, my real computer is in the shop and I was hoping it'd be ready by now, but unfortunately it's not, but I have each play that you sent me in advance that we're going to go through here. We'll start with Aaron Rodgers Cause mm. I believe, and, and you even pointed this out. There is kind of this misconception maybe that, oh, he's lost a step. Oh, well, you look at his numbers last year, and he really wasn't that good. And there's a lot of context that I think is often left out. So you're the perfect guy to have on to break down the film. So you tell me where you want to go with this. You want to start with the film or you want to set this up. But your, your thoughts on what the film revealed when you watched back Aaron Rodgers' season a year ago. Yeah, I'll set, I'll set it up a little bit first because, yeah, there is, you know, when people look at the numbers, the drop off in numbers from his MVP year to last year. And obviously, the, the you know, the most obvious thing with that, he loses Devontae Adams. Yes. Um, the receiving core, it was a young receiving core. We saw Christian Watch, Watson emerge as the year went on. But other than that, early on for half the season, he didn't really have a reliable guy that he could trust. And we know he's demanding a lot of it with him 
over the years, when you look at his success, it's been feel, it's been chemistry with his guys, whether it's, you know, Donald driver or Jordy Nelson or Devante. Um, so much of that is getting those reps together, getting that chemistry. And with such a young team, that's really hard to do. Um, and then when you add into that, all the injuries that nagged at him throughout the year, remember he was dealing, you know, when you're dealing with, uh, with a finger injury, on your throwing hand, it's going to affect the way you throw the football. And, uh, he, you know, he did reveal at one point, once it started feeling better, how much it really was bothering him. Um, but you still saw the really special things that make Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers show up time and time again. Um, the example that I'm going to show here, if we want to pull it up, um, is a play that Jets fans might remember from that meeting with the Packers last year when they were able to get the win. Um, but this is the stuff he still had in his bag and still pulled out regularly. You're going to see him, uh, at Alan Lazard's running a go up top. Uh, the jets are playing with the too high safety look. So this is an incredibly difficult throw to have to make. There's really only one spot you can put this ball with the safety ranging over once he sees, uh, you know, that the one safety drop down to, uh, in that robber position, he knows that he's going to have a chance to get that ball in, into that window before the middle of the field safety can get over. And I mean, you can't throw a better ball than this. You just absolutely can't. <laughs> um, and Lazard makes the grab and we're going to see that connection, uh, in New York as well translate over. So that's why I wanted to pick this one too. You get a little bit of a, a little bit of a sense of Lazard, the toughness there to be able to hang on to that ball. And you can really see it. If we show the, the other angle here, the end zone angle, um, you can really see the, the precision here. And uh, again, th these are the throws that he just makes time after time after time. And he makes it look so easy. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't get, it doesn't get any better than that. There was the one uh, around, around Christmas uh, against the dolphins too, where he dropped it into Mercedes Lewis. That was a similar type of throw. Um, and these are the things that he's going to bring to the table. Um in New York. And again, I have zero, zero concerns that there's any drop off, any signs of age showing again, it was the injuries and it was what was going on there at receiver that were responsible for the decline in numbers, not his play. And when you look at like Aaron Rodgers year from last year, the broken thumb on his throwing hand, that was a rib injury. And he still went out there. And by the way, he played 17 games and, you know, I always bring this up to jet fans because yeah. this stat, was referenced a lot on this show. So the Jets last year, if they had just scored the league average in points, which was 22 in the NFL, based on that, they would have won 11 games. But because yeah. they were so inept on offense, they were 29th in scoring, they only won seven. And that was despite the fact that defense only allowed 18.5 points per game for a full season. Yeah. And I mean, you look at the Patriots game alone, uh, the one with uh, with the return at the end. I forget which week that was, but yep. um, that game alone, I mean, if they just had mediocre quarterback play in that game, um, it, you know, that could have turned around the whole season. Um, so it really is. You're right. The margin, it's not even Aaron Rodgers doesn't even have to be MVP Aaron Rodgers for this team to be a playoff team. He just has to be, you know, uh, even if he's like a, a lesser version of himself this year, this is a playoff team. But I really do think we're going to see him back closer to that MVP level uh, than what we saw last year. What did you think of just his mentality since he's been a Jet showing up to OTAs? It kind of seems like, you know, even his teammates have said this as well. I know Randall Cobb was a guest on with, with Kay Adams on when you guys are doing the show from the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. And he said he hasn't seen Aaron Rodgers as happy, this excited in years. So what, did, what have you made of? all the buzz around just Aaron Rodgers kind of turning the page from Green Bay and his excitement towards being a Jet. Yeah, and so Kay and I broke it down a little bit this morning. We we combed through his uh, his press conference from yesterday. And this is after he tweaks his calf a little bit and, and misses practice and there's concern and all those rumors flying around and all that. Um, and he couldn't wipe the smile off his face. He saw just the the joy on his face and he couldn't, he couldn't hide it. He's... I don't want to say because he's always, you know, you can't play at the level he's played at if you don't love football, but sometimes it wears on you. And I think that situation in Green Bay wore on him a little bit. And you could tell he just he's loving the process right now. He's talking about being in the meeting rooms and and working with Nathaniel Hackett on crafting this offense and, and getting everyone else up to speed. He's talking about working with Zach Wilson and how much he's enjoying that. 
Um, I, I really do. It's one thing. It, it, it's one thing to enjoy going out there and playing the game, but like it, the guys that are great and the guys that have these greats, they they fall in love with the process, and um, that's what it seems like Aaron Rodgers is doing right now. He's falling back in love with that process, and uh, it's gonna be it's scary. Um, if he if he uh, you know is putting in this type of an off season and and the vibes are this high, it's it's scary what he's gonna be able to accomplish this year. Just hoping he can stay healthy. I think every Jet fan was like, "You got to be kidding me!" When we found out oh. yesterday, oh my God, he's got an injury, and it turns out you know the media made it sound like his leg needed to be amputated. <laughs> Turns out he's he's just fine. But, you know, I, yeah. I know every chef that was going through it for a little bit yesterday. Yeah. And I mean, the one question, why, you know, if he says he's never done that that workout before, um, I don't know that we need to be strapping weights um, to Aaron Rodgers back while he's running. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to question the training. Side. I'm not going to go there fully. But uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he's going to be fine again. He was all smiles yesterday and and there's nothing to worry about there. One other guy I wanted to ask you about, just because I know you guys recently spoke to him on your show, uh, mm -hmm. Randall Cobb. So I brought him up earlier with what he said about Rodgers, but I heard Aaron Rodgers asked about Cobb yesterday say, I think he still has a lot more left than people give him credit for. Uh, when you were going back watching all the throws Rodgers made last year, Cobb was still involved in that offense. What stood out when you watched him? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, again, there's that chemistry between them and Cobb finds a way to find open space, right? Like he's, especially against zone coverages, he's going to find that hole in the zone and settle down and Rogers is going to find him. And, and it's invaluable. I know a lot of people make the jokes. Oh, he's old. Oh, it's just Rogers bringing along his friends, but no, like there is a lot of value in having him there, especially like you saw the connection with them over the past two years in the red zone in, in some big moments. I remember, uh, that Cardinals game on Thursday night football two years ago where Devontae was hurt and it was just all Randall Cobb in the big moments. And they came down. That was when the Cardinals were undefeated. I think they were eight and oh, nine and oh. And yep. the Packers came in and knocked them off. And it was Thursday all Randall game, Cobb right? in that game. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. um, you know, Cobb still has a significant role with that, but also having him in the room, this is one of the most intelligent receivers in the league. He's he's he has the work ethic. He has the knowledge. He's a great guy to have in the room. And I know like from an outside fan perspective, sometimes you don't really see the value in that. But it really matters to have a guy like that around your young receiving court. He's going to help a guy like Garrett Wilson out tremendously. If you have a question for Matt Hamilton of FanDuel TV, the up and Adam show that he co-hosts with Kay Adams all the time or any of his film breakdowns, submit that. In the comment section, we'll bring those on the screen. We got another breakdown, though, before we get to some questions to wrap up here. Quinn and Williams, every Jet fan is hoping and praying they just get this deal done. We don't want it to drag on when the excitement for the Jets is at a record high. He had one of the great seasons in the history of the Jets a year ago. First team all pro, and he finally yeah. turned into the guy we thought we were getting when the Jets used the third overall pick on him in 2019. So before we play some of the clips here, what did your film study of Quinnen and really the Jets defense kind of show you what makes Quinnen Williams such a special talent? Yeah, and Quinnen's a guy, when he was coming into the draft, you know, there were those questions about his experience level at Alabama. He didn't play a ton of games there, but I absolutely loved him, loved the tape, and I thought he'd be the prototypical three technique, you know, with his speed, with his athleticism, and that's where the Jets primarily, you know, he moved around a lot. He played some five tech, he played all, but he was mostly three tech, five tech, used his athleticism that way. And, you know, we saw Quinnen have some good seasons, but it wasn't, you know, maybe measuring up to where he was drafted. Right. And I noticed this past year, he was playing a lot more one technique and a lot more nose. And that's where he absolutely dominated. He still lined up at some three technique. They moved him all around, but I noted like he was making a huge impact when he was playing nose and one technique. And that's what we're going to dig into a little bit here is how that really played to his advantage. And it's kind of counterintuitive to the type of player he is like profile wise to put him there. Um, you know, cause that's usually where you, uh, you put the, the big space eater that can't really move. Um, but Quinnen was actually was absolutely able to dominate from there last year. And I, that's why we saw the leap that we saw out of him. I don't think it was necessarily him doing anything differently. It was the way that he was utilized. So let's go to some of the plays here. So this first play we have up on the screen, you could set this one up for us, Matt, and then I'll pause it and then roll it here. So go back to the yeah, beginning. So this is go ahead. So this is from uh, this is from 2021, and this is him at three technique. You're going to see him uh, in front of the the tackle there, Deion Dawkins. He's a little bit covered up right now, 
but you'll see off the line, you know, there's a lot of space between him and that guard. The guard's going to be able to eat up that space, get hands on him, and Josh Allen's going to be able to get rid of this ball. So once we get it going here, you'll see it. He's got a lot of ground to cover before he gets to that guard. Guard's able to get into his pads. Going to roll it against a little laggy. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Should be. I don't know why it's moving so slow still. Hold on one second. Let me refresh. See if we can get this. Um, I'll get it. I'll get it. This quit in play so everyone could see. But to your point, the, the the way the Jets used him last year, I mean, it makes sense why he broke out second year in Salah's system and whatever they did in year one, he wasn't he wasn't happy with, so they made the adjustment and here you go. And yeah, and it's uh and you'll see again, not that he can't succeed from three from the three technique spot. He did have a bunch of sacks from there this year, too. But you see it there. The guard's able to steer him to the outside. Josh Allen's able to get this pass off and complete it for a big gain. Um, he's not able to really impact the play as much coming from that spot. Now you'll see this year when we go to the next play against the Jets, moving inside. The Packers, I mean, and this is against the Packers. And look, he's head up over the center. He's at he's playing a true nose right there, and he's able to beat the center. You know, as a center, you got to worry about snapping the ball and then getting your hands up. Quinnen is so quick. There's no center in this league or very few centers in this league that are going to be able to handle him when he's lining up head up at a true nose like this. You look at how quickly he's able to get his hands on that rip move and get through to Rogers for the sack. And also, yeah, the quickness Rogers can still move even at this age and the quickness to be able to take him down. And you'll see it in the next clip as well. He's playing more of a one technique uh, in this next clip. Here's the next one on your screen. It's the Vikings. And yeah, and this is and, and this is a run play. Watch, they try to double him. You know, it's a little combo block to start. And that's the thing I think I underestimated with him. I knew he had the athleticism and the quickness, but the strength. Watch how he's able to, if we run this back again, watch how he's able to fight off both of these blockers. He's able to gauge the guard and the center, shove the guard away, push the guard, center back into the backfield and then make the tackle on Alexander Madison for a loss of two or three yards. I'm just going to keep so, rolling it because it's just, it's more impressive every time you watch the dominance. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's just, this is, this is stuff that there's only a couple of guys in this league that are capable of making plays like this. And again, I think it's, you almost get his athleticism almost worked against him in some ways because you just think, yeah, let's put him at three technique, move him away. But you see here in those short areas, he's able to win because he has such incredible initial strength and then he's just so much quicker than these guards and centers once he gets his hands on them gets that initial strength that initial shock and is able to use his strength he's able to disengage and get into the backfield and make plays so that combination of strength and athleticism is what makes him so special and utilizing him in the, that one technique spot and as a nose at points, it just really accentuates how much stronger and more athletic he is than everybody else. So out of the guys that got paid at his position already this offseason, mm -hmm. Dexter Lawrence with the Giants, of course. You had uh, Jeffrey Simmons with the Titans, Deron Payne with the Commanders. Where would you rank Quinnen in that group? Because he clearly thinks he's the best and he wants to be the next guy up and get the most amount of money. Yeah, and I, and I think that's fair. I think I would say he's the best out of that group. It is a phenomenal group of, of defensive tackles, but um, with his ability to play multiple spots on the line, be effective from everywhere, and again, really give you something like Dexter Lawrence is, is, is a perfect example. He, he's athletic for how big he is, but he is he's more of a kind of space eater type of guy. He's not shooting into the backfield with regularity the way that Quinnen is able to. And, uh, you know, that's what sets them apart. And there are only a handful of guys in this league um, that are of that caliber. And I think it's really you look at it. It's uh, I think right now it's Aaron Donald and then it's Quinnen at that defensive tackle spot. And Quinnen wants, you know, I, I reportedly twenty four point five, twenty five million, which would make him the second highest paid defensive tackle besides Aaron Donald, which seems to be fair for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I, and I think the Jets realize how valuable it is. It's just, you know, it always gets tricky, especially when you add uh, an Aaron Rodgers to the mix and there are other people that have to get paid. And, you know, these negotiations are, you know, these negotiations are tough, but I would think the Jets are going to prioritize it. They're going to work it out. And I think Quinnen wants to be here too, because I think he understands 
the opportunity that's in front of him now, um, you know, with this team being as relevant as it is with him coming off of the year that he's coming off of in this system. Um, he, you know, I would think he has to be excited about coming back here. If you have a question for Matt, submit it in the comment section and we'll begin our Q and a here. If you have a super chat, you cut the line, you go first. This first one is from Ricky who writes in. Matt, how good do you think Garrett Wilson can be with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback? Yeah, I did a breakdown on this a few weeks ago. I think he is going to absolutely flourish. Um, you know, and it's, it, you know, we saw him put up 1,100 yards last year with that rotating cast of, of characters at quarterback. I don't think, you know, 14, 1,500 yards is out of the question for him. He's that talented. He's that well-rounded. And, you know, he does it all. He, he he's a he's a great deep threat. But also when you get the ball in his hands, he's able to do some special things after the catch. And that's something I think I underappreciated a little bit with him coming out of college. Um, and he really put it on display last year when they were able to get the ball in his hands on time. Uh, he did some really, really special things. So I think he's uh, I think he's going to be an all pro caliber receiver this year. I'm with you. And, you know, I look at it like this, you know, he had nine games of Zach Wilson last year and the guy still was able to win offensive rookie of the year and have 1100 yards. I mean, you add Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, Rodgers himself has already compared him to Devonte Adams. I've been saying that for months on this show. So that made me feel pretty good. And I'm not a film expert yeah. like you are. Yeah, and uh, Randall Cobb, I love Randall Cobb's comparison for him. When we talked to him at the Derby, he said he's a mix of Devonte Adams and Emmanuel Sanders, Woo! which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> because, you know, Emmanuel after the catch can get after it. So that's a, that's a, Pretty, pretty lofty comparison. Great question here from Southern Jet. Based on past tight end use, which Jets tight end, CJ Uzama or Tyler Conklin, will emerge as Aaron Rodgers' pref uh, preferred safety valve? Oh, that is a great question. And it's it, it's tough because both of them bring a lot to the table. Both of them are very skilled players. Uh, we saw how Uzama was really able to flourish with Burrow. Um, and we saw it at points last year where he really popped Conklin, I think was, uh, was more consistently leaned on in the offense, but um, I don't know. It's, it, it's a hard, I think they're both going to be utilized around the same. I wouldn't be surprised though, if we start seeing uh, some of the other guys on the roster start getting some burn too, though. Ruckert is an intriguing prospect and we're hearing a lot of stuff about Zach Kuntz who uh, the athletic profile is just absolutely unreal um, you know, I know he's a seventh round pick, but, but hearing Sala and Joe Douglas talk about him after that rookie mini camp, they're thrilled with him. Um, we actually had him on our show before the draft and, wow. uh, real likable personality, um, humble kid. And, uh, again, that athletic profile, there aren't many, there aren't many players in this league that have that type of athletic profile at his size with the, with the, with the vertical, um, with the height with the catch radius, um, his explosiveness. I mean, this is a world-class athlete. There's still stuff he's got to refine from a technical perspective um, at the tight end spot, but he's somebody I could see emerging uh, as a weapon for this team as the year goes on. Now, Rodgers loves throwing the tight ends in this offense. I, I mean, how big of a deal do you think it is that, yeah, maybe you know the, the, there were some Jet fans that wanted Odell Beckham Jr., another receiver or whatnot, but – between the receivers they do have, and now you would think Uzama, Conklin, Rucker, maybe Koontz being part of this offense. Do you look at the Jets' skill position players if you throw the tight end in as, yeah, they have more than enough for Aaron Rodgers to go out there and be Aaron Rodgers? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, this receiving core, again, Odell would have been great to add, but – you got Lazard adding McCall Hardman. I, I really think I did. I also um, I do a show with Matt Castle on Kansas City Sports Network where we break down the Chiefs film every single week. And it was a shame McCall Hardman got hurt this year because I think he really turned a corner. You know, the, the Chiefs are kind of waiting for him to be that guy to, to be that reliable second option next to Tyreek. And he wasn't really able to do it early in his career. He just relied almost entirely on his speed. Um, as a vertical threat, and he still has that, but the route running improved so much. All the little nuances that you see from successful receivers are starting to show up in his game before he got hurt, so it was such a shame to see that happen to him, but I think it, it's to the Jets' benefit because I think they were able to get a steal there, and I could see him doing some really special things in this offense this year. There's a lot of depth in that receiving core, and I wouldn't be worried about missing out on Odell. This one is from Jesus Jerry, who wants to know, Matt, is soup an appropriate meal for breakfast? Um, I think anything. I mean, listen, 
working on good morning football for six years, getting up at three 30 in the morning. I don't, uh, I don't uh, every day. I, I don't put time limits on anything. I, I will eat whatever, whenever it's put in front of me, uh, it, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, those things lost all meaning to me. So sure. I think you can have soup for breakfast. Why not? Well, there you have it. Uh, this one's from Mr. Bonesy who wants to know what's your honest opinion about Daniel Jones. Yeah, I think uh, I think we saw Daniel Jones turn a major corner this year, too. And uh, and again, I know the contract, it looks it looks pricey. The Giants took a little bit of a gamble there um, handing out that deal. But I think he saw enough signs of growth that they felt comfortable. And if he continues to grow, it could end up being a steal at that price because the cap is going to keep going up. That's the thing to keep in mind with all these contracts, too. The NFL is making a lot of money and the cap is rising every single year. So um, it could end up being a value for them. But yeah, you look at what he did, especially given that the receiving room was just a rotation of, of guys. You know, they had so many injuries. They weren't a great top end receiving core coming into the year as it was. They had so many injuries throughout the season and he found ways to perform. I think he's a perfect fit for what Brian Dable wants to do. They did a great job taking advantage of his athleticism last year. And I think as this con receiving core continues to grow, I think we're going to see some bigger things out of him. I mean, he was brilliant in that Vikings game in the playoffs. He really was. The big fella with a super check cuts the line. Do you see safety Chuck Clark starting or playing a prominent role at safety? So Chuck Clark is the guy the Jets kind of under radar move. They traded a seventh round pick at the very beginning of the offseason to bring him in. And now he's likely going to start, at least on paper, going into the summer opposite Jordan Whitehead. Yeah, so Chuck Clark is uh, Chuck Clark's an interesting player because he was in he really thrived in that Wink Martindale system in Baltimore. And uh, he was a guy you saw a lot playing at the line of scrimmage. They love to blitz him. Um, I think that's where he's really at his best. So I think that's the role you could, you could see him in is, uh, you know, allowing this, this, you know, this defense to get a little creative, use him up at the line of scrimmage, use him in some of these pass rushing packages. Cause he is, uh, he's relentless coming after the quarterback, but I, I like that ad. It, it, anything that gives you versatility and allows you to be creative as a defensive coordinator is a win and, and getting a guy like that, um, for a late round pick is uh, I really like that move from Joe Douglas. Luffy wants to know how you think the running back room will go. Will Brees be ready to carry the load and, and what can you expect from the rest of the group? Yeah. I mean, it's tough, you know, coming off of a knee injury, you know, sometimes, I mean, you've heard from some players once they're healthy and ready to go, they're, they're able to handle it right away. Other guys, it takes them like a year of being back in it to fully feel like themselves again. You know, we saw that with Saquon, um, so it's really hard to predict. It's so different player to player. Um, but I do, uh, you know, I do really like the jets running back room, obviously Michael Carter, um, we saw fill in and, and, you know, add that element as kind of the third down back receiving back. Um, he's also, you know, he can, he can make things happen between the tackles as well. And then, uh, night rotating in as well. He's, uh, he, he's a load to have to bring down. So I think they have a lot in that running back room still, um, even if Brees isn't full go right out of the gates, but he's a special player. Um, he really is. And uh, I'm hoping he can get back to the player he was before the injury because he's going to do some big things in this league. VR wants to know, do you think the Jets are going to be on hard knocks this summer? Oh, I mean, if they're not, HBO and NFL films are missing the boat. I'll say that much. Uh, <laughs> well, they could be forced I, to do it too, but I think it's so yeah. interesting, right? I, I, we looked it up on the show a couple of weeks ago. Last March, late March, we knew the Lions were doing it. So I wonder what the holdup is that they have yet to announce the team. Yeah, the holdup might have been waiting for the deal to get completed. And, uh, you know, and then mm -hmm. uh, it got to once the deal was completed, it was they don't want to, you know, everything's calculated. They don't want to step on the toes of the draft and do anything that's going to take shine away from the draft. They don't want to do anything that's going to take shine away from the schedule release either. So now that we're in the wake of that, I wouldn't be surprised if we get that announcement in the next week or so. I, I mean, look, selfishly, as a Jet fan and who talks about this team every day, I would love it from a content standpoint. But I know there's some of the fan base like, ah, we don't want the distraction. So to that, yeah. I say the last time the Jets did the show, they had their best season in 25 years. Yeah, that's a great point. They're the one team that I think has defied because it, it usually the teams that are on hard knocks. And again, it's one of those things. If you're on hard knocks, you you didn't have a good year the year before. So you're going to be at a disadvantage usually uh, out of the gate. So I don't think it's like a hard knocks curse. It's just, again, you're usually, no uh, you know, 
you're usually not a great team to begin with, so it's going to be hard to make the playoffs. But yeah, the Jets are the one team that's kind of defied that. So yeah, 2010, 11 and five back to back trips to the championship game. So yeah, yeah. sign me up. Uh, Michael wants to know how much better would the Jets be with DeAndre Hopkins? What's your take on on Hopkins when you watched him? Because obviously he's mentioned all these teams he's going to play for. It doesn't seem like he's going to be on the Cardinals this year. When you watched Hopkins on film, does he still have a lot left? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, he is, uh, you put the ball anywhere near him. He's going to come down with it. Um, you know, you hear things about off the field. Is he practicing as much as he should? Is he as invested as he should be? Those are rumblings that you hear. I'm not saying one way or the other. Those are just things that you, that you start to hear circulated about him. Um, but I think he's still got plenty left in the tank. If you make a move for him, you got to redo that deal. Cause I think his cap hits almost $30 million. Uh, for this next year so you're gonna have to make a commitment to him if you make that deal because I don't think anybody at this stage of the offseason where these rosters are is going to be able to absorb that hit um, but yeah I mean I think if you get a motivated DeAndre Hopkins and a renewed sense of energy around him with a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers um, I mean pairing him with Garrett Wilson that receiving core would be ridiculous um, <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna do it but obviously I think that's something you got to look into because yeah I think he's still got plenty left in the tank Matthew writes in, Matt, could the 2023 Jets be the most talent-laden team Rodgers has been on? I mind you, the 2010 Packers were a wild-card team, and the 15-1 2011 Packers had the league's worst defense. Wow. That's a, that's a really, really good question. Because um, that's one of the things I think that gets underrated with Rodgers is, you know, uh, you hear about, oh, he only won one Super Bowl. But you look at some of those teams, I mean – 2015 that receiving core that just had nothing he's throwing a jeff janice and gets that team into the playoffs you know um as you said they had some bad defenses some of those years too um it wasn't really until like Devonte adams is by far the best receiver uh that he's ever had and he, you know you saw what some other guys that had success with him did once they got away from him so i think you got to give him credit i think he made some of these receivers look a little better than they were too um yeah that 2010 team I think it's between this and that 2010 team because you still had Donald driver in his prime. You had Greg Jennings in his prime. I know they were a wild card team, but that defense was lights out during the playoffs and down the stretch to Charles Woodson. was uh, what that was one of the best seasons I've ever seen from a DB, um, you know, different from, I, I, I know that's controversial because Revis was on unreal that year too. So it's kind of pick your poison. Obviously Revis was a shutdown guy. Woodson was more of the playmaking type uh, that year. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he was so phenomenal. So that 2010 Packers team is really good. I think the Jets team has the potential to be the most talented team he's ever been on. I'll say that because, um, you know, if these guys play up to their abilities, there, there's just so much talent across the board. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think there's a, a stat that's out there. The only time Rodgers has ever had a defense that finished in the top five was that year he won the Super Bowl. So yeah, the Jets, he should have a top five defense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something uh, Kay and I actually have loved to point that out over the years on, on GMFB. It's uh, it, it, it's uh, it is remarkable. Like they were never really able to get that defense right around him, even though they invested a lot of uh, premium picks while they ignored the receiving core that he wanted them to address. But um, that's another story. <laughs> no doubt. A few more for Matt and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Rich wants to know your thoughts on Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, so obviously Hackett um, is coming off of a rough time in Denver, but uh, you saw what he did with Rodgers. Obviously, the comfort level there with Aaron is is enormous, and I think you can't underestimate that because Rodgers, you know, you heard him talk about it yesterday, how he's in the meeting room kind of working through and building the offense hand-in-hand -hand with Hackett and teaching these young guys the offense. So um, having somebody that he knows he can work with and they can kind of influence each other. And it's not just a one way street, I think is so important um, with a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. And again, it's not just the comfort level, like Hackett brings a lot to the table too. We saw him get a lot out of Blake Bortles uh, when he was in Jacksonville, helping that team get to an AFC championship. And uh, again, it's not a coincidence that Rodgers had some of the best years of his career. Once Hackett got there to green Bay, I think they just have a great working relationship and uh, Hackett really understands the type of offense that Rodgers wants to run. So I think that ends up, you know, at the time, not knowing that Rodgers was a real realistic possibility, it was a little bit of a head scratching hire. But now, I mean, it's it's a brilliant hire because no one's going to work better with Aaron than Hackett.
Bart Simpson is watching the show, and Bart oh. wants to know, did you like JMS or Tipman better? I wanted JMS, but I'm happy the Jets drafted a center. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of both guys. I mean, I think uh, I think Tipman was a great pick. I think that was a position that they really needed to address. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I think both of those guys are going to be starters in this league for a decade. So, um, you know, uh, while I I like JMS a little bit better, too, I think like I had them very close. Um, so I, I don't think you can go wrong either way. And I think, uh, yeah, I think Timmons going to anchor that offensive line. I really expect this offensive line, if they can stay healthy this year, to really be a strength and be much improved. Your thoughts on, uh, speaking of staying healthy in the O-line, just your thoughts quickly on Makai Becton. I, I mean, he wants to be the left tackle, so I'll say go win yeah. the job. I mean, he worst case is probably starting on the right side if he's healthy, and Dwayne Brown could start at left tackle. But, I, I mean, health, you nailed it. It's the biggest thing for the Jets in that position room. Your thoughts on what Becton could do? Yeah, and I'm, I'm not ready to give up on Becton. I think uh, the talent level is through the roof. We've seen it in, in spurts. Um, it's really, it's, it's all been about health with him and it seems like he's gotten himself into better shape. You wonder how much the, you know, he was carrying a little bit extra weight. You wonder how much that had to do with some of the health issues, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm still very high on him. I think the potential is still there. It's just a matter of putting it all together. And, um, you know, you want, you, you, you know, you want players with high ceilings on your team and he's certainly one. And it's great that they have the luxury of still having Dwayne Brown there as well. Final question from Southern Jet. Matt, has Sauce Gardner gotten to a point where opposing offenses are shying away from him? And if so, do you see the Jets' D-line stacking the box more to take advantage of it? Yeah, and when you have a corner like that, I don't know. You know, quarterbacks quarterbacks can have arrogant mentalities too, and they might, you know, I don't. There are a lot of quarterbacks that they want they want to attack you, they want to test you, they don't want to make it look like they're shying away from you. But it's definitely in your head, I think, at this point that he's out there with how dominant he was last year. And you bring up a great point because we saw it again. We saw it with Revis. Uh, when you have a corner that's that dominant, it allows you to do a lot more things defensively and get more creative up front and get more aggressive up front because you know the back end is going to be secure. So I think you'll absolutely see some more things, some more aggressive things in the mix as we go with the Jets knowing that they have him to cover them on the back end. Matt, this was a ton of fun, man. I can't thank you enough for coming on. Thanks for bearing with a little buffering issue with some of these <laughs> clips we rolled for you to break down. But this was awesome, man. Big fan of your work. And, and tell everyone who maybe just tuned in late or wants to follow you on social media where they can find you and all your content. Yeah, so you can find me on Twitter, Matt Hamilton 25 You can watch the show Up and Adams on FanDuel TV, the FanDuel Plus app. It's on from 11 a.m. Eastern to noon. It's also on YouTube as soon as the show is over, if you want to check it out there, or our Twitter account, Up and Adams Show. Post a lot of clips there. Kay's super interactive. Um, she's awesome. So, um, yeah, that's where you can find us. And, uh, Jake, this was so much fun. I really appreciate you uh, having me on and, and taking the time with me, and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Look, I know you're actually in New York, so you don't have to worry about you know this backdrop behind you. So you know, enjoy all New York has to offer. Have some pizza for all of us. <laughs> I will. Thank you. He's Matt Hamilton. My name is Jake Asman. Big thanks to everyone who tuned in today. Do me a favor before you get out of here. Hit the like button down below. Smash that subscribe button on the right-hand side of your screen and help this channel continue to grow. Thanks again to Matt for joining us. Jet fans, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day.